I'm very pleased to be joined on the line right now by blues musician, guitarist, and actor. We've got Jim Burns with us. Jim, thanks so much for taking the time to chat here this morning. My pleasure, Brian. Nice talking to all you folks up there. I'm looking forward to coming up and uh, spending a little time uh, in the Nickel Valley there. So a uh, big question, uh, the fact that you are coming up for this weekend's events. Uh, how often do you come here, and have you been here before? Oh, uh, yeah, a couple of times. I've played the uh, the Mountain Music Festival. I mean, it's going back maybe five, six years the last time I was up that way. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously it's one of those places that you pass through on the way to everywhere else, uh, <laughs> but with the Coca-Cola there now, but, uh, often stop in for a sandwich or, uh, you know, gasoline and stuff in Merritt, but I'm looking forward to getting up and playing. Like I say, it's been five or six years since I've actually performed up that way. And, and I'm looking forward to it. Got some friends that I look forward to, to seeing as well that live up that way. So it's going to be fun. I mean, and, uh, Great band, I mean, Tom McKillop and uh, the Lion Bastards. Can I say that on the radio? Yeah, absolutely. You just did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. This is something that uh, we have uh, sat in with one another here and there. We've always said, hey, we should... And uh, anyway, it, it's all coming together this weekend. So Now, I know when you were announced to, to headline the Walk of Stars Gala coming up tomorrow, a lot of people kind of thought, hmm, Jim Burns, that's interesting. You know, this guy's won Juno's for Blues Album of the Year and Folk Music Awards and, and this kind of thing. Uh, do you think that you kind of fit into the, the country genre, though? Well, you know, I, I, we're gonna, I'm going to be doing some blues, and I'm going to be doing a couple of country tunes, too. I, I just absolutely... Love, you know, the old, I mean, I, I'm going back, but, you know, I, I love some country music, and, and it's going to be, what a lot of people don't realize is, is that, you know, blues and country are like, you know, just the opposite sides of the same stream, and uh, there, there's the, the truth and the stories that run through them. I just got back from uh, visiting uh, down south and uh, was down in Memphis for the Blues Music Awards, but, uh, you know, traveling through there, so much, it, the musics are so intertwined that uh, it, it's such a great opportunity to, you know, to sing a couple of my old favorites, a couple of things from, you know, Buck Owens and Ray Price, and then do some blues, too. When you grew up down south, you know, like so many of the blues guys, I'll never forget one of the great moments of my life was down at the Commodore Ballroom. I was playing a show. I was opening for Muddy Waters, and it was uh, myself and Robert Cray and Muddy Waters. We were at the Commodore, and next door at the Orpheum was Charlie Pride. Wow. And and I knew the guy that was running the con- concert, and, and I introduced Charlie Pride and Muddy Waters. And these guys came from about 60 miles apart as the crow flies, Sledge, Mississippi, and Rolling Fork, Mississippi. And they both were so familiar with one another and one another's work, and they were huge fans of one another. And, you know, like a lot of people would not really make that, uh, the, the, you know, that connection. But but they definitely had a connection, man. They they both grew up in that hard scrabble Mississippi country, and and knew one another's work, and uh, and were big fans of one another. And and I think that that's something that uh, kind of skips a lot of people's. Uh, they they don't quite understand like the the, the true connection uh, that that goes on down there. So I mean, you know, it, it, it's something that uh, that I've been exploring, and uh, and I think really my next album we've t- I've talked with. Uh, with my producer about it, uh, I'd really I've, I've written a couple of just flat out country tunes, and then we want to try to uh, make a you know make an album that that does that crossover. I mean, look, Ray Charles, one of the great blues and soul singers of all time, had his biggest hits with modern sounds in country and western music. I and mean, when he made that album, uh, you know, featuring songs from Eddie Arnold and uh, uh, you know uh, all those. I mean, that, that whole that that whole album was just. Uh, is just a monster for Ray, and uh, he made that connection so so well. And this is the sort of thing I want to do. There are so many of those kind of soul tunes that, that really are are very much like country and western songs as well. Uh, Percy Sledge is another guy. Mm-hmm. When a man loves a woman, I mean that's dependent on the instrumentation. You know, if you got an organ and uh, some horns, it's an R and B song. If you put a, a steel guitar on that, I mean that's a flat out country. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, when you talk about your producer, are you are you talking about Steve Dawson? Steve Dawson, yeah. Okay. Now, I, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, when it came to to you working with Steve on on Fresh Horses and House of Refuge, that that's almost where you kind of pulled it all together with the the gospel and the country and uh, yeah, and that, that kind of thing. We really, we, that that was part of the when, when Steve and I first kind of hooked up. I mean, we were well aware of, of one another's work uh, in in the music biz and everything. But but when we started working together, we we did a show. And we realized that uh, we both had this. I, mean, I just hate to pigeonhole things. I hate to to do one thing as exclusive to another. And I like to find that ground. I like to find that crossover ground. And <clears throat> and Steve is of a of a similar mind. 
And so when we got together and started working together, uh, I think uh, it became more than the sum of its parts, and we were able to bring so many influences onto the table, and that's what we want to keep doing. Does that make things a little more fun, a little more uh, imagination goes into it, and a little more creativity when you're, when you're bending genres like that? It, do, it definitely does for me. Uh, I, I just find that, you know, when you, when you get to a point you're playing music, and in particular like we have been doing over the years, you're playing every night, you know, you might play 250 shows over the, over the course of a year. And, and if you find yourself doing the same thing and stuck in a rut, it's, it's really a crime because music is such a, a gift, such a blessing that I've been given, you know, to share that when you get that feeling of that you're going through the motions, that it's like a job, I mean, that's, that's a crime. And, but work, when I got together with Steve, it, it, it didn't seem like it, 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 there was no going through the motions. We were finding new stuff every time we picked up a guitar, you know, and uh, every time every time we got into a song, we'd try an arrangement, and we'd say, well, let's let's try this one this way. Because I, so much music people try to put, uh, particularly in blues and stuff, there, there are a lot of guys that, that, that try to pigeonhole things, and they, and they pretend like it's music in a museum. Well, it's got to live. It's got to be today. It's got to be now as well. And so you've got to find the truth that's in the song and, and, and find your own way of expressing it, which is not always the way it was originally expressed. And uh, and really, that's the fun in the cre- creativity, and it does make it fun, and it makes it interesting and new every night. And uh, you know, it's it's such a blessing, and it's it, we're so lucky that, and uh, you know, we need to share. Now, uh, the, the crowd that you're playing to on Saturday tomorrow night isn't exactly a large crowd, but you, I mean, you've played massive, huge folk festivals as well. I think our Civic Center holds you know three fifty, four hundred people. Yeah. Which do you prefer, playing a crowd like that, or you mentioned you've been here for Mountain Fest? Yeah. Do you prefer a, a big, big crowd like that? I I, I much prefer a, a more intimate setting. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you, you find you find different strengths, and 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 you go to your different strengths when you're playing in certain situations. But but I love to be able to uh, sort of if I want to look out and see, and see the look on people's faces and the look in their eyes as opposed to looking out across a huge field and that's fun too. There's a great energy that happens with that. But but uh, from from my point of view, uh, just the, the the intimacy and the uh, the ability to communicate on, on that you know more intimate level is is to me uh, really uh, great. Which it's I mean it, that's kind of a perfect setting for me in a way. Well, I tell you, Jim, we're looking forward to the performance coming up uh, tomorrow night. Before I let you run, anything that you wanted to add to the fans here in Merritt? No, I just look forward to, to getting up there. And there's, you know, there's a, a, a great band, and there, I, know, I know a lot, a lot of special guests that are going to be there too. So it's, it's a real mixed bag all evening, and uh, we just want to come up and have some fun and.